Ni hao, and welcome to Chapter 2 of How to Stream. Live streaming is huge, but most people are not really aware of how huge it is and how peculiar it is in different cultures. Especially here in the West and Sweden where I live, people have low knowledge of this development. You could say that the Asian countries are the creator of life when it comes to live streaming. They have been pretty much ahead of everything we have here in the West. In both number of services, innovation, users, e-commerce and other things connected to uh, live streaming. In China, for example, live streaming is connected to everything and has been in over a decade. Already in 2005, Ouying, one of the biggest live streaming social networks, launched their PC apps where you could live stream as a gamer originally. Before they started broadening to include video streaming and chat features for uses such as concerts, fashion and sports. Even before Amazon-owned Twitch launched its first service in 2011, Yujing had already a mobile streaming application. And today the service has over 300 million users. I should mention one thing, which is that you should always be open to source criticism when learning these numbers, because many social networks in Asia suffer from fake accounts or bots. Even on live streams, you find robots pretending to be human. And even here in Sweden, this has been an issue from time to time. But the services are massive, even counting in uh, those numbers. Another service worth mentioning is the most popular short video app in China, which is Douyin. The app supports live streaming and has today over 320 million daily active users. As you well know, China likes to keep for themselves. However, Douyin is available for us in the West, but we know it by another name, TikTok. Douyin is broadly similar to TikTok, but has in China become more advanced than its global counterpart. The biggest difference is how they work with e-commerce. I'm going to talk more about that later. China's live streaming industry reaches over 450 million internet users. Just think about that number, 450 million. In another perspective, China has more humans connected to the internet than there are people alive in Europe. With over 800 million connected citizens, when 98% of them are connected via mobile, China is truly a real giant. Becoming a live stream anchor or chubo, as it's called in China, is an increasingly, increasingly popular career choice for the country's young people, especially females. By the way, you can push the thumbs up for my awesome Mandarin or thumbs down if it sucks. <laughs> live streaming is pr primarily a form of communication. And the Chinese love to communicate. Over 30 different services have launched during the years, all special in their own way. Today, however, intense competition is a factor, especially for the chubos that are creating content. Uh, a high fan turnover and uh, unstable incomes make streaming tough for streamers in China. I saw some statistics that show that only 1 in 600 streamers earn a profit compared to a standard salary in China. It is not uncommon to find streamers insecure about this job because they are not so sure how long their fans are going to uh, like them. The fans just need to swipe their fingers and they reach the next live streamer's uh, session. Which of course demands that you always are on, on your top game. We're going to talk about that and all that pressure later. The hosting services, however, always come out on top. There is no other country in the world where e-commerce and entertainment are more integrated than in China, as I mentioned before. Live streaming is used to engage consumers on streaming integrated e-commerce platforms. Only by two or three clicks is all you need for you to buy something in a live stream session. And it works. Only Alibaba's Taobao One marketplace generated more than $15 billion last year through live streaming sessions, an increase in almost 400%. And this is where China is very different. While most live streaming platforms in the West are focused on gaming and entertainment, live streaming is how the Chinese consumers find new products and decide what to buy. 
it is fascinating to see how fast people's buying behaviors can change. There is no hard selling here, as consumers grow in sophistication and taste, they would rather join in on a chat. In this moment, consumers often feel a sense of empowerment. The streamer or brand don't have time to polish their answers, because consumers have the power to hold them accountable through questions in real time. It's closer to a job interview than to a product demo, but in here the viewers are conducting the interview. The consumer is the judge, jury and executioner if necessary. All of this, however, allows brands to have a richer experience with their potential customers. Live demonstrations allow for dialogue that can cover more complex products or services. Maybelline, for example, sold 10,000 lipsticks in two hours through its live streaming session with Hong Kong streamer Angela Baby. They did this on another big social media service called Maypie, who have over 150 million users. More and more people live alone in China, over 15%. And it is mostly older people, but even the young are marrying later and the divorce rate is increasing. So a large number of young people have begun settling down as singletons, clustering together in metropolitan areas. And then, as you can imagine, after you come back from work, you are hungry for some relaxed social interactions. And through these live sessions with internet celebrities, you get that. Viewers are watching all kinds of things, like people sleeping or doing chores. I'm going to talk more about that on, on another chapter. Fans say that they feel their blood rush and heart flutter when a host reacts to their comments. If you get picked out in the stream, you feel special and appreciated. Your idol just showed you some attention. You don't get that watching Paradise Hotel here in Sweden. And here in Sweden, we also have many single households. Actually, Sweden has been known for having a high percentage single households for a long time. Today, it is the highest in Europe with around 39%. But that has been a part of the family dynamics here in Sweden for a long time. Here, for example, young people move out to an apartment when they are 19, 20 years old to try their wings and taste life, something that is not so common around the world. We also have a lot of old people living alone after their spouse passed away, and we also have female liberation, tech development, and urbanization who play a big part in this, of course. That'll be enough for today. I can talk about this all day, but next time I'm going to look at the rest of the world, Taiwan, Korea, USA, Europe. So please do subscribe so you don't miss out, and until next time, think about how you would, would you buy things today, how you do that today, and if you could buy something from a live stream in the future. Adios.